Good morning. It's Monday. It's the 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the 25th day of July 2022. It's 60 degrees and cloudy here at Site B. It is the day after San Diego Comic Book Con. We have got so much stuff from Marvel, but none of it really affects gaming in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the only gaming-related thing so far that has come out of San Diego Comic Book Convention is, of course, the trailer for the D&D movie. And we have the Gelatinous Cube action figure that is being put out. It is coming from a company called Golden Archive. Um, and it is a resin plastic cube with a bunch of random items on the outside. And then I guess there's a way to pop over, pop off the bottom to stick another action figure in it. That as long as it fits within the uh, six inch or so thing. Uh, it looks exactly like described. It is a clear resin cube with some stuff sort of glued to the outside. Um, and then you can, there's a hole in one end and you can pop off the bottom to put an action figure in. And then you put like the action figure's hand coming out of the hole so it looks like they're getting eaten by a gelatinous cube. I like the idea of being able to stick action figures in it. It's a continuation of what they did with the D&D sized gelatinous cubes. Uh, if you remember them, there was always a way to like pop off the bottom and put it on top of a character or whatever. So that's fine. Um, I don't like that they put all the stuff on the outside, though. Um, you know, the technology is at the level that we could have, like, you know, perpetuated the illusion there were things floating inside. You could have done, like, just a solid cube figure, and then we could see the things floating inside it. But maybe they felt showing, like, a skeleton bone or whatever floating inside the cube was too disturbing. So they put skeleton bones on the outside. But those are going to get popped off or damaged. So I don't know if that was a brilliant idea. But we're going to have another gelatinous cube figure. And I, for one, will never not be happy to see my favorite D&D &D monster represented in an action figure. Every other news coming out of the death of this weekend that doesn't revolve around um, Radiant Citadel or the D&D &D movie. Because we're going to have to get in course to Albear Gate. And Radiant Citadel Gate. Uh, let's see. D and D Beyond has a free preview of the GIF, the GIF, who are the um, hippo people of Spelljammer, and they have a free preview of Space Elves on D and D Beyond for Spelljammer. So, if there was any question ever in your mind that Spelljammer is not a Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, and was not a Saturday morning cartoon in the past, let me just remind you that one of the major races of the original Spelljammer were bipedal hippos and space elves. Yeah, it's a Saturday morning cartoon. Uh-oh. It's hard to believe, but the 40th anniversary of Mazes and Monsters is coming up. And to celebrate, because, yeah, that's something that should be celebrated. Mazes and Monsters is, you know, what led to the satanic panic and the whole thing about how D&D &D is bad for you. Why should this movie ever be allowed to see the light of day again? It's also horribly untrue. Uh, it did jumpstart Tom Hanks' acting career. Uh, but, yeah, it's just, oh, God. Um, but it's his 40th anniversary, and to celebrate it, there is a 40th anniversary remastered Blu-ray release coming out. So, uh, if you ever want to remember, be reminded that how 40 years ago, you know, this movie helped perpetuate all the horrible myths about Dungeons and & Dragons and led to the satanic panic and all the other things that plague D&D &D and still plague D&D &D to this day, we can thank, um, yeah... By the way, of course, the uh, story that Mazes and Monsters is based on has been proven to be completely untrue. And speaking of D&D-related movies, we also know that the trailer for Honor of Among Thieves dropped. Um, and there's already controversy around it. There's two major points of controversy around it, which is 
strange because neither of them are the controversy you would think that would be surrounded. Um, so the two major points of controversy about uh, this product are, of course, um, the owlbear. And the second one is the art. Now, considering you have Michelle Rodriguez, a Hispanic actress playing a green-skinned half-orc, you would think all the people who have been jumping on the orcs or a racist um, thing would be going, how dare you cast a Hispanic actress as a half-orc and then paint her green? That's racist. But no, the two things we're upset about, one, is apparently a lot of the artwork on one of the posters for the product could be taken from Pathfinder. Uh, there is a lot of similarities on the poster to some Pathfinder art, which have some people going, oh no, you stole art from Pathfinder and didn't give them credit or whatever. I don't know, that's still being resolved. The other one, of course, is Owlbeargate. Of all the things people to be upset about, apparently people are upset about the fact that the Druid individual, who may or may not be a tiefling, I'm not sure if she's supposed to be a tiefling or supposed to be a member of the same Elvison race that, um, Laura's elf was in the first season of uh, Critical Role, because if you remember, Laura's elf also had like wooden horns, and this druid has wooden horns, and there's a scene where this druid wild shapes into an owlbear, and druids in 5e cannot officially turn into an owlbear, so people are upset. They're saying, oh, this isn't the D&D &D movie, it's the Pathfinder movie. They're saying, oh, this is a hint. They're going to show us a new druid build that lets you turn into mythical monsters. Uh, other people are like, uh, it's technically a beast and they can turn into any beast. So if she's high enough level, why couldn't she turn into an owlbear? Um, I think it's just cool we get to see an owlbear. It's, owlbear has sort of been one of the unofficial mascots for Dungeons & Dragons for years. Uh... So I don't know why people are upset other than the fact that druids and Pathfinder can turn into owlbears and druids in D&D can't turn into owlbears and how dare they show a Pathfinder druid in a D&D movie. Obviously, this is secretly the Pathfinder movie, right? Um, yeah, so I'm sure that's going to continue to lead to lots of arguments as to whether druids can or cannot turn into owlbears and really, who cares? There, we do also know have the uh, Wonders of the Multiverse playtest up on our Nerd Arcana over at the uh, D&D website. So if you're looking to see some of the things that are being hinted at for the future of whatever D&D is going to do next, like after Spelljammer, maybe Planescape, maybe more with the Radiant Citadel, who knows? Radiant Citadel could turn out to be the biggest disaster in Wizards of the Coast history since the last big disaster. I mean, Strixhaven was a financial disaster, but it still gets them a lot of press. People still talk about it. And I assume that even though Radiant Citadel may end up being a financial disaster, it's still going to be a success because people are going to be talking about it. I mean, every time I bring it up, I'm giving Wizards of the Coast free press. So there is a new Unearthed Arcana called Wonders of the Multiverse over on D&D Beyond, which features some new classes and races and thingies and who cares. We have the 5e Doctor Who role-playing game called Doctors and Daleks from Crucible 7 that is out. Uh, it is a very strange system that has tried to turn 5e into a Doctor Who role-playing game. The idea that people can play the Time Lord never makes sense to me. That, that always makes one player character more powerful and more special than all the other player characters. Really, it should be either all companions with no Time Lord, the Time Lord's an NPC, or better yet, you know, the, the perfect plot would be a group of kids find a TARDIS. But anyways, it's out. Uh, if you're interested in playing uh, Dungeons & Dragons in the world of Doctor Who, yeah. Okay, there's also a fifth a new version coming out for Adventures in Rokugan, Legends of the Five Rings. This will be called Adventures in Rokugan. It's from Edge Studios, and it's taking five Legends of the Five Ring and converting it to 5E. 
Uh, and you will also get um, a $5 coupon if you go to Gen Con and buy it there. So it's Legends of the Five Ring converted to 5E. Of course, uh, that leads to the whole Oriental Adventures, Legends of the Five Rings, uh, the fact that a five, you know, there was an attempt to turn D and D into the Oriental event. Yeah, it's just confusing to turn Legends of the Five Rings into a five E system. Whatever. Uh, there was a big sale on Mophitius, but the system is over. Uh, but the big news out of the Modifius sale was that there is now a 2D20 SRD available. So if you've ever wanted to write stuff using the 2D20 system, there's an SRD available now and a Creative Commons uh, stuff. I'm saying uh, a lot today, aren't I? I'm sorry. It's this fog. It just kills my brain. So if you've ever wanted to create work for the Mo Mo Modifius, Mophidius 2D20 system, there's now an SRD and a Creative Commons OGL set of rules that you could follow to start making stuff for the 2D20 system, which I hear okay things about. There is a new board game out from Pezo called Path Re Pathfinder Revolution. It is a Euro-style board game based on the polit political deduction bidding game Revolution by Steve Jackson Games, rethemed around the forces attempting to control a city in um, the world of Pathfinder. So can Steve Jackson Games and, pa and Pezo have combined their forces to create a board game that is loosely based upon a previous board game but is now themed around Pathfinder, but it still kind of follows the previous mechanics of the other board game. Yeah, so free stats for Spelljammer races over at D&D Beyond. Uh, there's a D&D &D movie, which is getting flack because apparently druids can't turn into owlbears. And... Uh, and, of course, all the Radiant Citadel stuff. Radiant Citadel is going to be the gift that Jesus keeps on giving. It's like we cannot go five seconds without finding something else horribly, horribly moronic about Radiant Citadel. Hindsight, maybe, Wizards, you should have late waited a little bit longer on releasing it and actually gone through and addressed the issues because some of these issues are blaringly obvious. But we will talk about them in our usual Radiant Citadel because apparently I'm doing a lot of talking about Radiant Citadel. So there's no reason to talk about it now because I'll talk about it later on. Yeah, Elves in Space. Till next time, I have the OGGM. If you appreciate this content, let me know. Please take a moment to consider liking, sharing, and subscribing this content. Join the adventures of the OGGM as we uh, head off into the ending of summer and the beginning of fall. Oh, September's right around the corner, which means October. God, this year has gone by fast. Help me reach 1,000 subs by the end of the year. And until next time, get out of my space, you damn space elves with your space spaceships and your space dragons and your space fish and your space sandwiches. Space elves.